With the analog, you have so many limitations. Uh, you have to, anything that you want to expand, you have to buy a new piece of gear. You have to allocate electricity for that piece of gear. You have to build a rack space for that piece of gear. Uh, and then you have to think about real estate space for where all that gear is going to go. With digital, it seems to be all in one footprint. You have one piece of hardware that's running software, and everything that's expandable is within that unit itself. So obviously the advantage over digital is endless possibilities of expansion uh, with, without the lim limits of cost. Um, well, I first initially had to keep an analog console. Uh, we run monitors in front of house on two separate desks, but one engineer runs both at the same time. So they're both in the same front of house position, which is a little unorthodox for most monitor positions. Um, getting the new digital console, I had to keep some kind of comfort zone for guest engineers who weren't comfortable. And also, I had to satisfy the club management and owners from taking a big step and having something go wrong. So we've managed to keep both up and running monitors in front of house off both desks at the same time allows me to have the opportunity to express to a guest engineer if they weren't comfortable or familiar with the digital desk that they have the opportunity to still work on the analog desk and vice versa having digital desk running a show if I were to have a problem instantly I can swap over to the other desk. For the most part people have been very very enthusiastic to want to jump on the Avid console. Um, most engineers have spent their whole career on analog desks. They know the sound generally that they can get from it and they know their limitations. For those sound engineers that want to push themselves to be better and more confident and more familiar with new products, they're really not, it's not a big deal to, to persuade them to jump on the new desk and once they're on it their eyes light up and their ears light up and, and off they go and it's kind of hard to get them away from it. Sound checks used to take about an hour. People would get the sound they wanted, but now guest engineers will take all the time they have because they know they can, they can keep pushing it and pushing it until they achieve uh, something that they're comfortable with, but they still know that they can keep going. And of course, saving presets. Um, if you know, we start off a line check with a kick drum, you're going to bring up gain, you're going to EQ it, you're going to put a gate on it. That might only take 10 seconds for someone that's really comfortable with the desk, but if I'm not in a lot of time, I can save that basic parameter and just load the kick channel where it already has my group assignments, it has my starting EQ, my starting gate. So that saved me maybe only 5 seconds, but when I'm dealing with 50 channels, it's going to save me minutes in the end, which I can spill over to my actual mixing time. instead. Plugins are amazing. Um, there's so many to pick from. You can find ones that really pertain to you and what you're trying to achieve. Once you find them, you can keep going with it. You can save that setting because it might only work with a particular act or a particular instrument. And you can just keep building files from all of those and uh, chaining plugins into one another, uh, reversing the chains, experimenting with effects and plugins to come up with new, new results that you didn't expect before is, is really exciting. Analog world, you're, you, you have limits again. You, you mix a band and you get to a point where you're really comfortable and then you kind of stop. And uh, from someone who is, is creative, and a lot of people that are, you find yourself mentally frustrated, I think, at that point where you're just kind of sitting and riding a fader. And that sometimes that result is fine. Um, for a lot of people, and myself, having all of the, the means to keep pushing myself with plugins and, and all of the uh, effects, y you, you start your brain starts telling you that this isn't it, you can keep going, you can keep going, and you just start pushing yourself more and more to find better sound, uh, things that you, you weren't expecting to find that jump out at you, and you can only do that by pushing yourself creatively, and, and that desk totally allows us to, to, to achieve that.
It's definitely heading, uh, obviously it's gonna stay digital. Things are gonna keep going more towards software-based uh, applications. And um, I, I believe that over time, it's just gonna get smaller and smaller where most of us are gonna be using Avid software on a mobile device uh, versus like a laptop or uh, a wireless uh, notepad computer to be able to walk around and have a stationary hardware device that's running your show, but you now have the freedom to walk around and and mix next to someone who who maybe is having not as good of a time where they're standing, and now you have the ability to go where they're at, address the problem, and uh, they see it. And here at the club, we have five zones to mix from, so having that ability with technology at that point to be wireless, walking around, and, and mixing is, is definitely... Uh, something where I see the future of it heading.